Chad Eastie Show, News Talk KFYO. Thank you very much for tuning in today. So last week, right before I went on vacation, Michael Quinn Sullivan of Empower Texans posted on their uh, on their website a uh, post about uh, being offered a, I guess he had called it a backroom deal, where according to Sullivan, he had a private meeting with a speaker of the uh, Texas House, Dennis Bonin. Uh, Chairman Burroughs was there as well. And in this post, uh, according to Michael Quinn Sullivan, it was uh, alleged by Sullivan uh, that he was offered media credentials, basically if he were to take it easy on most of the Republicans. But, hey, here's like a hit list of 10 Republican incumbents that you can go after. But just, you know, don't criticize the session overall. You know, don't target other Republicans. But here are 10 Republicans that you can go after. And it was reported by Michael Quinn Sullivan that uh, I I guess the speaker had left the room and it was Burroughs who delivered the, the, the list of names to Sullivan. Well, over the weekend, uh, you, you had radio silence most of the time, uh, but you had the speaker deny that this took place. And then I guess it was yesterday Uh, Michael Quinn Sullivan reported that he had uh, recorded the entire conversation and that he could produce the audio if Bonin did not recant. Bonin came out and said, go ahead, release the audio. I assume calling the bluff of Michael Quinn Sullivan. Well, Michael Quinn Sullivan apparently does have the audio. And uh, three, I think as of right now, three Republicans have heard that audio, including my next guest, Representative Jonathan Stickland, uh, joining us here on the program. Uh, Representative Stickland, I think I set everything up the right way. Uh, you mm-hmm. you heard the audio, correct? That's correct. Yes, sir. The when, whole did, thing. when did you hear the audio? Last night. Okay, so... What did you take away from the audio? What what is what what is on that audio recording? Well, it's over an hour long. Um, you know, I I've been watching this story just because it's so shocking, and um, I was pretty up to date with it because um, I think it's going to have huge impacts on the state of Texas. And I got to tell you, um, I think if anything, Michael Quinn Sullivan has. uh, (laughs) underreported the severity of what I heard last night on the audio recording. How so? Um, There's there's more damaging stuff in it than he's even let on to. Um, It was very clear. It was concise. Everything that he has claimed um, was in there was in there. It was not convoluted. It was uh, very clear. There are a couple of different specific quotes that I have read that he said, and um, they're all there. It's it's pretty shocking. I'll be honest with you. It is. And, you know, what a lot of people don't think about, and this struck me, is the candidness of the conversation, um, specifically from the Speaker and, and Chairman Burroughs, um, this is going to hurt a lot of innocent people you know, on a personal level, if this thing ever gets out in its entirety, there's some stuff in there that just is flat out mean and, and frankly, kind of rude. Um, About other elected officials? Yes, yes. Yep. Innocent bystanders that have nothing to do with the story. I mean, there's just, frankly, some vomiting of the mouth, if you will, um, by these individuals. And you can't help but just kind of cringe some at some of the stuff that I heard um, that just doesn't even... It's 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 beneath it's beneath the office for sure. Okay, so were media credentials, and, and this is something that I have not seen in any of the write ups yet. Were media credentials offered to Michael Quinn Sullivan in the audio that you heard? Yes, even even more than that. Um, at one point, the media credentials are offered to him, um, but then it is also said that media credentials for Someone that currently has them will be removed. 
um, which I think they present as something that is attractive to Quinn Sullivan uh, from a liberal organization. Okay, so so okay, so the the what you're saying is that Speaker Bonin offered to remove press credentials from another organization. Correct, and give Empower Texans media credentials. What's that? That's who's the main who's thing. that organization? So, that is uh, specifically Scott Braddock in the Quorum Report. That he would remove Quorum Report's credentials and give those credentials to. Not that they would give the same one. So the first the first part of it, is I think details matter in this, which is why I've got to be, you know, careful about presenting an, an exact quote because I don't. You know, well, I yeah, you don't got you don't have a transcript things. in front yeah. of you, right? Yeah, but here's what I'll tell you: it's very clear because he says it numerous times, and you can tell that Michael Quinn Sullivan is very nervous when he's saying it specifically. But he says, you know, I am I am going to give you guys access to the floor and put your guys on the floor, media credentials, and then he says something to the effect of, and I'll even go a step further. I'll get Scott Braddock off the floor for you. And then there's a bunch of laughing, and it's like, ha, 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 ha. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty over the top, to be honest with you. Were any other media organizations named? Not that I can recall, no. Okay. What was the role of Representative Burroughs? Obviously, he's you know uh, you know out here. Representative Burroughs, uh, you know people. Uh, you know, a lot of people are uh, represented by him. What was his role on the audio tape? So uh, he's he's there the whole time. Um, it, what, what's weird about the tape is the way that it flows, and just the, the the way you know you listen to it from start to finish. And you almost get the sense that uh, Speaker Bonin and Chairman Burroughs went into this with a specific plan. Um, they wanted to lay out this deal and very specifically were ready for the list because they referenced it at the start of the conversation um, that they that they end up getting. And it, it feels to me almost as if like they went into it with a plan because it, a couple of times the Speaker knows, like, hey, I shouldn't be in the room when this happens, okay? And, you know, it's almost like they've got a plan that Dustin is the one that's going to deliver the list because the speaker should not be in there when it happens. The problem is, as the conversation goes, they get so comfortable, it's that the discipline goes out the window and this vomiting of the mouth starts to happen to where you not just have Dustin Burroughs doing it, but Dennis Bonin is audibly giving names and commenting on individuals that are on the list as well. So this isn't even a situation where Dustin Burroughs can come out and say, you know, I uh, it was all my fault, I messed up. And one person is not going to be able to fall on the sword the, the way that this audio plays. They both participate. At the end, specifically, Dennis says, you know, he's going he's gonna to give you the list. And Dennis ends up actually leaving. And then Chairman Burroughs and Michael Quinn Sullivan end up having a conversation for the last few minutes. But... The mass majority of the conversation is all three of them in the room. Visiting with uh, State Representative Jonathan Stickland here on the Chad Eastie Show, uh, who has heard the audio tape. What? I don't know if you've been in contact with any of the, 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 the other members on this. Uh, what do you think the reaction is going to be? Well... The interesting part and the hard part for Speaker Bonin is going to be that this kind of um, head knocker, deal maker, backroom guy, that's what he was for so many years in the Texas House under Strauss, okay? He was honestly a guy that I think most a lot of people were intimidated with because he's very cunning, very manipulative, um, hard to read, not super close to anyone, but always floating always seems to be in the middle of everything, very transactional um, kind of of player. And I think that's what hurt his chances originally at becoming speaker and grabbing that, grabbing that gavel um, because people had had negative interactions with him. You never quite knew where you stood, and it changed a lot. 
And I think the problem is, you know, he came out so hardcore in laying out a vision for what the Texas House would be and saying, we're going to work together, we're going to have each other's backs, you know, no, no campaigning against incumbents. He went over the top to the point where I've never seen any other elected official push forward this agenda. And this is this audio tape shows that you've got a blatant case of politicians saying one thing and doing something completely different in a very, very um, shocking way. I mean, you literally have him address, you know, the duplicity that he knows is going on with this and talks about it and laughs about it at different points. And, you know, I think this shatters trust and relationships at the most basic level um, in the Texas House. And I I will tell you, I will be shocked if either of them survive this. I think this is going to upend Texas politics. What, what, know, okay, what do you mean? What by, I heard last night. Do, do you believe Speaker Bonin will have to resign as Speaker? And what do you believe? Uh, you I know, do. For, for for Chairman Burroughs, what, what do you mean he he won't survive? I, I think that Burroughs. I think both of them are dead politically. I think they will. I think they will have to resign because you know. And and part of this is is um, you've got you've got caucus. Uh, bylaws, you've got legal implications, you've also got um, you've, you've got blatant denials and specific things you know, I unequivocally uh, deny the fact that there was a list given when it's absolutely clear as day and what's going to be really stunning is the actions and responses from Speaker Bonin and the lack of response from Dennis over the last week I think is just just so hard to swallow once you hear that audio because you realize the level of deception that they've engaged in. I mean, not being able to recall a conversation is one thing, but blatantly lying about what happened and the contents of that conversation, it's, it's going to knock, knock people's socks off. Be- it did mine. Before I let you go, well, two, two more questions. Do you, do you think it was right for... Michael Quinn Sullivan to secretly record the conversation. And two, do you think he needs to release the full audio so that way all Texans, regardless of hurt feelings, right? Regardless of hurt feelings, do you think the audio needs to be released for all Texans to hear? I I am glad that Michael did it um, because he I think his intuition was right. You know, Michael's the victim here. He, uh, I think if you, you know, in my few talks that I've had with Michael Quinn Sullivan, this is not a burden he was looking for. Um, this is this is affecting Michael Quinn Sullivan in a lot of ways. I think he'd rather just be not in the spotlight on this deal, not having to deal with uh, these situations. He's had to spend a lot of money, uh, you know, bribes, bribes, and the way that this works, you know, if you don't report – when you are made an offer like this, then you are complicit. So if Michael wanted to ensure his organization and his integrity from doing any wrongdoing, he had to go out with this. Um, and I'm glad that he had the recording in this case. I think that, you know, as we start to piece together the way Dennis has, has operated in, in the House, what happened with the Chris McNutt story and, and his past history as Speaker Pro Tem with, with Joe Strauss and a lot of different situations, um, I don't think Dennis can pretend like he's this, you know, upstanding guy with integrity anymore. Okay. But 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 should he release but but should Sullivan release the entire audio for everyone to hear? I think it's ultimately going to come to that. I will tell you this, for as a Republican who wants to keep Texas red in twenty twenty, I sure hope it doesn't come out because it's gonna hurt us bad. All right. And I think that we need to cut out the cancer and move on immediately. I, I've got to hit the from break the Republican side. Representative Stickland, I appreciate your time today. I'm sure we'll be visiting uh, again in the future. Thanks, Chad. Have a good one. Thank you. That's Jonathan Stickland here on the Chad Easty Show, KFYO.